What's going on folks, Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and I have a very exciting video and video series that'll be coming out that I'm excited to tell you about. So I've partnered with the DMs Guild yet again to produce a new video for you every Friday through the month of March covering a variety of different topics. If you recall, a while back I made a video asking what kind of products from the DMs Guild you would like to see, and I put a poll out and you guys gave me a bunch of feedback on what you wanted to see as far as player options, monster books, and so on. So while a bunch of folks uh, you know, voted in the poll itself, the comments were overwhelming for people wanting DM tools. And I thought, and the DMs Guild agree, there's a DMs Guild, DMs Day kind of sale going on right now. So in honor of that, the first uh, video in the series of DMs Guild product reviews for the month of March is going to be about DM tools. And I have two books that I'm gonna go over for you today, and there's also gonna be a discount code. It'll be in the description, but you can also check later in the video for that. So what am I gonna be talking about to you today? Well, I'm gonna be talking to you about the DM's Guide to Fishing and Gesh's Guide to Making Things. So the DM's Guide to Fishing is currently on sale right now. You can see for $1.76 for the PDF. This is a best silver seller, uh, came out in December of last year. And then Gesh's Guide to Making Things came out back in October of 2019 and is a best platinum seller. You can currently get this for eight. 96. And you can see right here, it says the DM's Day Sale from now through March 14th. Titles are marked down accordingly. And then again, there'll be a discount code that I'll give to you later on. So um, I wanted to showcase this. So I picked two things. One, if you know anything about me, or maybe you don't, I don't know if I've shared this recently. I uh, love fishing. Fishing is probably my favorite thing to do in the world, more so than even playing Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, I've been a fisherman my whole life. And, you know, I've preferred, competed in professional tournaments and stuff like that. I love fishing. And one thing that I've always felt is sorely lacking, especially in 5e, and I know it's very niche, but is fishing rules and a fishing mechanic. I thought we were going to get something big when Icewind Dale came out around the Knucklehead Trout, and that obviously wasn't the case. And then I find out that there's a book called The DM's Guide to Fishing. And I've always tried to come up with, I like doing mini games within the game. I think that you can have a lot of fun. And honestly, sometimes players can latch onto those moments. And The DM's Guide to Fishing basically gives you a very comprehensive and well thought out way to go about this. So if we were to kind of scroll down and take a look, uh, point of fact, no bookmarks. So that's an immediate negative point there. But let us keep going. So you can see there are tips for the DM. There's a little couple sidebars about equipment. And then the big kind of chunk of this is the fishing tables. But if we were to keep going, it's going to give you, I thought, some pretty interesting information, tips from the GM or for the DM. I also really like the art because, you know, the DM's Guild stuff can use old edition art in some cases. And I recognize a lot of the images and I enjoy seeing that trip through memory lane there. But it talks about equipment, how to go about it, right? Fishing rods, tackle and bait. If you're unfamiliar with the world of fishing, right, the rod is the rod, and then you have different things, whether you're using actual live bait or lures, and they kind of describe a little bit about how different creatures will probably respond different to, uh, you know, worms from the Underdark versus earthworms that we're used to and so on, and how to make different checks to find bait and how to use that. And I really like this, sec uh, this section here on fishing mechanics and storytelling because they go into how it should go about Ask people how what their fishing style is. Are they impatient? Are they calm and relaxing? Are they actively fishing? Are they just kind of lazily sitting around and waiting for the pole to dip and, you know, the lure to go under, the bobber to go, and whatever the case may be? Um, and then once that happens, then you actually roll into the mechanics of fishing, which is contested strength checks between the person as well as the fish. And then there's different rules for based on the size of the fish and different things, whether it'll snap the line or just get off the hook, whether they are more of an acrobatic jumping fish and have other means of spitting the lures and things like that. Uh, and then, you know, you can make different checks using underused skills in a lot of the cases, nature and survival for finding locations where it would be better to catch that particular fish and what kind of bait they would like. And then they give a little section here about magical fishing rods and how you could add those in if it becomes a big important thing, you know, plus one, plus two, plus three fishing rods. They give you the boat sinker rod is one that allows you to cast locate creature on an underwater creature, which I thought was a pretty neat concept. Um, and then again, you could get proficiency in fishing tools if you wanted. 
And then the main thing here, right, is the fishing tables, which will describe kind of how this is. So here's the general table, which is a D100 table. And you can see it splits up into tiny, small, and then medium-sized fish. And it tells you kind of what, that gives you a little description for those of you who don't know what they are, right? We see we see ones that are real world fish, right? Eel, uh, salmon, rainbow fish, different kinds of bass. Uh, but then if you scroll down, you'll see more unique D&D &D ones, right? We see here's a, here's a shark, a silver side, here's a dagger worm. But then you scroll down, you've got a quipper, which is like a piranha, a salamander turtle. We've got a merfolk, right? You catch a, a person. And then a jewel fish, which I like, is uh, a lumpy golden fish with various gems worth a lot of money on it. And this is sort of the generic one. And then if you scroll down, we have the arctic fish, right? You see knucklehead trout in here. Uh, and then some of those have different unique abilities, right? So the ice fish is an elongated black and white striped fish with nearly translucent fins. Its blood has the property of a potion of cold resistance. Then we can see cave and underground, coast and ocean, desert, dungeon and ruins and things like that. The, the, you can get an oyster, maybe find pearls, forest fishing. You know, if there's like a pond in the grasslands, mountains, planar fishing, which could be very interesting, right? Um, the penitent bass, this pale fish has long flowing fins of gold, which give it appearance of having wings. Uh, and it is said to carry the voice of minor gods through the material plane. Swamps, and then that's it. So that is the GM's Guide to Fishing, which I enjoy because, again, it adds something that I think is lacking and it would be fun for me. The second guide is Gesh's Guide to Making Things. So first of all, it has a cobalt on the front cover, automatic points for me. Secondly, it has bookmarks. So again, automatic points for me. If we were to scroll down, it is a crafting system. And if you know anything about me and you've played 5th edition for a while, you know that crafting is garbage, right? 5th edition has horrible crafting rules. Some would say there isn't even crafting rules at all. There is. They're just like a blurb in the back of the player's handbook and a little bit in DM's Guide and maybe Xanathar's. So this is expanding that out into what I think should exist, which is a true set of crafting guides. Not only does it cover things like armor, weapons, and even grenades and bombs, it also covers magical materials, which is something that I think is also sorely, sorely lacking. They have, they show you the different equipment needed to make different things, and they talk about having different levels of quality, right? Basic is what most of us would buy off the shelf or off the rack in a D&D &D game, and then you can see there's intermediate, advanced, and masterwork, and they tell, you can kind of increase the viability of your different weapons as you go. And then there are associated modifications that you can apply at different levels. There's a whole table of cost and crafting time, realistic cost and crafting time, right? Uh, you know, plate mail is going to take you 30 days, but padded leather armor will take you a day and only five gold, right? How about different weapons? We've got that as well. Uh, and then there is, I think, yeah, grenade launcher. <laughs> I was at the end where they have the grenade launcher section um, here. And then there's the different steps of crafting, which they talk about how you can normally work eight hours in a day without being exhausted, but you can push and try to work longer, but risk exhaustion to get something done faster. And they also have this section here on how you can improve existing equipment, success and failure, and the checks you need to make it. And I really like this piece here where they talk about actual weapons. So it says, and I like this because this is something I've experienced myself and because of the lack of systems and you know, to a degree lack of ingenuity on the dm's part i felt really i was really bummed about it so it says right here uh tova has a longbow she's used since level one she's been attached to it and wants to make it more powerful she doesn't know how to craft bows so she takes it to a bowyer they improve the weapon raising its basic quality to intermediate and supply it with a blazing modification so it can set loose arrows of flame dealing extra fire damage the price for this improvement of the bow is 200 gold and the price for the modification is 300 so it'll cost 500 and take nine days to finish pretty self-explanatory uh, she doesn't have that much gold and asks her friend to help he's a hunter and has a set of wood carving tools so he can he can use to make bows 
Since he's improving the bow and making the modification himself, buying the required materials to improve it only costs 100 gold, and buying the materials to make the modification only costs 150. He spends nine days crafting the bow, adding the modification as he works at the end of the nine days. He makes a crafting check using wood carving tools for the weapon and an arcana for the magical modification. The crafting DC for the weapon is 15 and the modification is 10. He succeeds on both and hands over the newly improved longbow back to her. And that's, I mean, that was the whole process and it's well done. And you can obviously make this as narrative focused as you want, but I really like that. It's not too difficult. Then they have a section here on making modifications, removing modifications. Um, it says if the item is a magical modification, it's considered magical for the purposes of overcoming damage resistance. You must have proficiency in Arcana to apply it. Um, and then it says it also requires attunement if there is more than one magical modification on the item, regardless of the level of the modification. So a base one may not require modification, but other ones might. And it also states here, the number of modification slots an item's number of modification slots increases with the quality of the item as does the available modifications for that item the available modifications are detailed later we'll talk about some of those exceptions to this are shields which can have no more than one modification slot no matter what the quality is the level of the slot equals the level of the crafted item meaning an advanced short sword has two modification slots and uh, the price of applying a modification to a shield is the same for armor Lower tier modifications can be installed in a higher tier slot, meaning an intermediate slot modification can be put in an advanced slot. I realize that was a lot, but it makes sense over what we talked about. And then there's price, and then we can see the different tiers for here adding different modifications to armor and weapons and what that's going to take, how many slots and whatnot. Then they also have additional materials, right? So some of these we're familiar with, right? Like adamantine and mithril, we know what they do. Um... And then we have, see, here's Azurite, which is a uh, magical stone that will give you resistance to, or advantage on saving throws versus spells. Um, and then it says weapons can be made to penetrate magical barriers like those created by mage armor and shield. We have cold iron for dealing with fey creatures. We already have mithril. Uh, and it says because of its lightness, spellcasters can wear robes strengthened with mithril without impeding their spellcasting, which is something I like. There's like a mithril weave clothing that you can get. Um, and then they also have monster hide bones and scales for applying different things. So it says, for example, the hide of a red dragon could give fire resistance and the fur of a yeti could give cold resistance. Uh, if a creature is resistant to bludgeoning, piercing, slashing, you cannot become resistant to those damage types. Monster hide that does not offer any benefits can still be added to an item. In that case, the item has the monster hide included in its visual design, but it doesn't grant any items or additional benefits. And cleverly, it also says you can use the guide in the monster loot supplements also put out by the same folks who did Gesh's guide to making things to find more rules about getting monster bits and things about that. Uh, for example, it says here, if a piece of hide grants two different resistances, those two resistances still only make up one modification. We have silver for the purposes of overcoming um, lycanthropes, and then we have the modifications. I also love the art in this book because you can see a lot of different things, right? So a bashing shield, for example, can be used as a weapon, which is technically not a thing that can be done, um, but it's a minor modification here. We have burnished here. You can see it's very shiny. Uh, you can choose it to reflect light, to find blind people, camouflage, to add advantage on stealth checks, climbing spikes, things that you would imagine, right? Comfortable armor so you can sleep in it, costumed armor um, to maybe make you look like something else uh finger blades right for the purposes of like cut purses and so on we could move on and, and kind of skim through here to see a couple other ones right arrow catching for a shield bracing so you can try to resist damage incoming uh, as a reaction um here's the mithril weaved clothing right so this is a basically a robe that gives you a plus one ac for like a caster who doesn't have armor proficiency makes sense right um Slick to help you slip out of people grabbing you, right? For like acrobatics or athletics checks, giving you advantage on those. And then you can see there's advanced versions of everything we're talking about as we kind of move through this list. And then we have, you know, the masterwork armor mods and the armor just looks amazing, right? Protected armor here, which kind of reminds me of Vigo the Carpathian from Ghostbusters 2. Basically, you're always under protection from good and evil. And then we have the same thing for weapons, right? So balanced weapons are easier to throw. They get range increase, uh, illuminating by, like uh, light up. Unbreakable means that 
they're not going to break with the exception of very powerful magics. Vaulting, when you could be using them to help you jump over things, for example, like a quarter staff for pole vaulting. Um, let's see. We have Blazing just adding fire damage. Brutal, allowing you to reroll damage dice. Scope to increase the range on ranged weapons. Thundering to add thunder damage and inc you know make a loud noise. Tranquilizer to knock people unconscious. Um, you know, wide strike to do sweeping uh, attacks and things like that. And you can just see there's a whole bunch of different things here. Um, and the masterworks, right? You can make a dancing version of a weapon, right? To make like a dancing sword. Um, elemental edge. There's all sorts of really great stuff. And then here's kind of a, a couple tables outlining all of these. And then if we were to get to the end, there's a section on crafting bombs and grenades, which I think is also pretty interesting because that's something we don't really have a lot of information on. There's mishaps can happen, obviously, in the crafting process. And then a variety of different things, a banishing grenade, a binding grenade, like a tanglefoot bag almost, concussion grenade, flashbang grenades, a healing grenade, which is awesome. It's basically like an aerosolized uh, healing potion uh, that you can throw and then heal people. Uh, which I like, a five-foot radius sphere of healing. Uh, incendiary grenades, gas grenades, light shells, right, for your, you know, anti-drow or, un, you know, underdark creatures, sleep grenades, smoke bombs, I like the spell-storing grenade. It's a shell designed to hold a spell inside it. Stun grenades, trip mines, voice box bombs, things like that. This is, it's just really well done. And then again, I'm very much going to go back and look at all of the other things created by Ann, uh, I think it's Gregerson here. We have the monster loot books. We have all these other things. These look amazing. I'm gonna have to go check these out. So anyway, this is the first of four videos in my Friday DMs Guild series here. So thank you again to the DMs Guild for sponsoring this video and providing the copies of these two things for me to review. And you guys can use the code NerdsLoveDMs10. I'll put the link in the description or the wording in the description, and that will get you 10% off orders of $10 or more of community created content on the DMs Guild. And this is good through the 10th of March. There will be new codes which each Friday as well. So thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.